I've been wearing a beanie as my hair looked bad. I'm true, desperately trying Des- to. Um, yeah, Do I put the beanie back on? No, you, you can leave that. That's that, fine. I don't you, like. You look, you look great, honey. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> do I? I actually, I feel like if I'm gonna, I look like a. Do I look like a buffoon right now? Uh, Why the awkward <laughs> pause? <laughs> um, uh, I'm not qualified to answer this question. Um, <laughs> Ian, give me. Is it bad? Do I put the beanie back on? No, actually, I need help. Uh, no, it's good. It's good. And what do you mean by good? So you were lying to me, <laughs> Alan. Yeah. I you. <laughs> what? Unbelievable. I was. I'm just trying to, you know, bro support and bros. I didn't want. What? That's not support. I didn't want you to feel bad. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna no, no, let yeah. me have food in between my teeth yeah. and make it look like I. What did it look like? Describe what my hair looked like. It kind of looked like, um, you know, the the uh, there's the '90s classic movie. There's something about Mary. Uh, I've heard of it. I don't think I've seen she it. She gets the sperm in her hair and it sticks straight up. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. All right. Like you, know, the, I, you could have just the last part. I think I would have got it. The movie. The movie reference. Well, because it was very. It was very explicit. It was in explicit. The movie. Okay. Yeah, I think it was iconic. What is the movie about? I feel I like I'm. I don't. I think it's. My parents ben, didn't let me watch it. I don't remember. Ben Stiller is trying to date about Mary. Cameron Diaz. Mm. I think that's actually the entirety. And of then he. Well, and then there's like a hair gel scene. Yes, yes. I think he jizzes <laughs> in his hand. No, he gets it on his ear, and then she thinks it's hair gel, like leftover hair gel. Yeah. And she puts it in her. Oh, uh, you know what? And then I think straight up. I swear, I think I've seen like a clip on YouTube, like something. <laughs> this is very like this is. Wait, I just realized that'd be a really good thing for like nutbusters to test. Oh, to can see you for what, hair gel? What is what does semen actually do? in your hair can you use it as hair gel seems like a really good opportunity to introduce today's guest of the safety third podcast this is aaron hill hey there how many podcasts have you been on before um i would say like four four okay which one has been the worst so far I was, oh. This one, because you didn't. I didn't realize we were going. We haven't didn't started say, Welcome yet. Welcome to Safety Third. <laughs> Welcome to we the were... Safety Third podcast. This is a very special edition of the podcast where we talk about the different kinds of hair gel. And also, our guest here is Aaron Hill, and he did BattleBots and Power Wheel. Ra- this is actually there's a very specific reason that you're here today. I mean, it's actually not super. I mean, I don't. Know, we'll we'll explore it. Yeah, you just pointed at the camera last time, and you're really just pointing at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. On, on one of the recent episodes, we were talking about power wheel racing, and uh, Maker Fair used to be this event. There'd be power wheel cars, and they would race them against each other. And I called it, uh, actually, what did I call it? An engineering dick measuring yep. contest. Uh, how uh, how did that make you feel? <laughs> It's accurate, but I won. <laughs> okay, well, what did you win, really, though? Because the whole spirit is that you're supposed to have these crappy cars, like t- children's toys, and race around in them, and then you go ahead and, like, actually engineer them and put in, like, exotic metals and, and different motors or whatever. Like, why? Explain this yourself. Is, yeah. Or, what, what joy do you actually get This is from like that? bad cop, bad cop. Why, <laughs> not, that, why not just drive a re- regular car? I can't believe you've done this. So step Aaron. one, I'm not alone. <laughs> there's a fleet of people in this competition. And there's people, full spectrum. You can go full, full spectrum. <laughs> okay. Wording bad, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that's you're the, safe here. We're, that's we're that's, all, that's <laughs> the same spectrum. That you wait, saw. isn't that no, that's literally the transmitters, right? The RC yeah, transmitters. The spectrum transmitters. Yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to have. Uh, there, there is a good rule that they do have, as you cannot put a tiny child in the car and drive remotely. It can only be a uh, large no, child. No, it it's gonna only. How have, only def- you have to you have to be over 16 with the driver's license. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm. What about Something the liability? Um, what about that that woman on like TLC or whatever who's like trapped in the body of an eight year old girl because she oh my had, god like, yes her her brain that went is wrong. elite Power Wheels jockey material okay. yeah yeah see that's like different that's like a different kind of dick measuring contest because it's like engineering <laughs> dick measuring contest but that one is like like I, what what would you like social engineering dick measuring contest like how can you break She's the rules so bad yeah. Like yeah. you, the organizers are sitting there banging their head against the wall because you've just completely destroyed everything they're trying to get at. What if it was? Could you? Would it be legal to find someone like a quadruple amputee so that they weigh less but they're still old enough and then they can drive with their mouth? 
Uh, yes, that how, is legal. How far has somebody pushed these rules? Uh, some people go through, and one of the more fun ones was uh, some cheating of the cars got to cost under five hundred bucks. Okay. Uh, and oftentimes, when you order stuff from China, mm. for certain customs reasons, vendors will put lower prices on things. Oh, oh no, really? So people start doing that. Oh, I did not do that. That's bad. That's that's actually bad, and you should yeah. feel ashamed of yourself, whoever did that. Which your Aaron's going to say their name right now. No. <laughs> you know who it was, though. <laughs> yes. Wait, were you one of the ones? I know pouring, specifically who it was. Were you one of the people putting like liquid nitrogen on the fuses so they wouldn't so, blow? That one's not allowed. Uh, that one's not allowed. No. Oh. Wait, I feel like we should give more more uh, premise to what uh, power wheel racing is. So, you know what power wheels are, I'm assuming. And if you don't, um, like a Barbie Jeep. Barbie like Jeep. The little plastic mm-hmm. toy cars that kids can ride around in. And they're like scaled mm-hmm. proportionately, right? They yes. cost like what, like two hundred bucks, one hundred and fifty bucks, or two hundred dollars, brand new. I actually, I've never, because I've used Power Wheels parts for projects before, but I've always found them on the side of the yeah. road. Or on <laughs> that's where, so that's they, where yeah. most I, cart bodies come from. I actually from. don't know how much they cost. No, I've never looked at them. I think, at them I think they're like <laughs> nobody racing these is buying them new. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to destroy them. Um, two hundred dollars, really? <laughs> they're like two hundred bucks, but two hundred bucks for like a rideable vehicle for a kid is like actually pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. But they're all plastic. They it's like plastic gears, tiny little DC motors. They use like a twelve volt or sometimes like six volt lead acid battery, and wow. they're really really impressive for a kid to drive in them. But for an adult to drive in them, you are hundred percent you're gonna break it. Like the all the basically the way the axle works is, is like a metal rod going through like a plastic. Yeah, the hole. steering the steering is more of a suggestion. Exactly. When you have that much weight on it. And so a kid. what what the event yeah. is and do you know what's the history? How did it start? <laughs> Uh, Jim Burke and a bunch of people at a pumping station one maker maker space mm. in Chicago uh, got together and literally just let's modify these and race them and it grew through there I only started doing it with a bunch of buddies of mine in 2016 do you remember what that first race like what were the modifications like what were they doing that one I, I believe it was just like Overvolting stock power wheels. It's oh. you take your drill batteries, yeah. you put those in, sure. or you add more batteries. Because I remember doing and, that yeah, super jank. Yeah, and they burn out really quickly too if you go too yes. high. Because I bought, I got one on Craigslist years ago, like the start of um, doing YouTube, and I think I burned them out almost immediately. So I stuck like 12 volts, and it may have been six volts, like it rated six volts. I stuck 12 volts on it. I think I toasted it. Um, but I wanted to make it go fast. So I put, I think it was like 24 volts, but it was all RC. So there was no load on it. And they think they still burned out. Um, and so it's, it's, there's not a whole lot you can do before you start having problems and you have to replace, you know, the motors, but then replacing Mm -hmm. the motors is a whole ordeal. So it's like the event is to race these crappy cars. Yes. And all the shenanigans that ensue from that. So effectively you need to figure out how to improve them one step from the garage or from the curb you find yeah. them on uh to mm. make them reliable enough to last because races are usually like 15 minutes and then there's an endurance race that was like over an hour right so and, stock and you've, ones aren't gonna do that for you yeah so you did okay so you've done you've done battle boss you've done power uh wheel racing um they kind of have like for me at least a lot of very similar there's like, a lot of similar characters. Similar characters two. and a lot of similar like scope creep. And both both yeah. the sports have been ruined in basically yeah. the same way. You know, I remember when I was a kid. Remember, do you, you watch BattleBots? I'm assuming we all watch BattleBots as a yeah. kid. Yeah, did you? Uh, watch I had a, did you, I had an yeah, antenna, were. so I watched it when oh, I you'd could have to, like, at smack friends' it around. houses. Oh wow! Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. So I remember there was one that was a computer case with like a gas chainsaw sticking out of it. Oh. And that has like stuck with me for a long time because I was pretty sure that I could build that, and I must have been like you know twelve years old or something. I don't, I don't think I could that. have. I remember you would have given it a good good world. Yeah, yeah, I think so. In you. My dad's help. The the ladybug one. That's the one I oh, remember because yeah, yeah, yeah. wasn't that like a father daughter team? Yes, mm-hmm. and it was literally like a playground like sandbox cover that was a ladybug, yes. a plastic so, ladybug. The entertaining part there is like that was Lisa Winter who's currently mm-hmm. one of the judges. Ah, oh, I see. I see. Why, why, why stray from that? Why would you yeah. not use parts from a playground for a robot? Explain I your shame. That, yeah, I assume that the meta doesn't support that anymore. Are there any battle bots left that use playground equipment? Uh, I don't think there currently are. 
You see, I know what it is because I do the same thing. You know, <laughs> you know, doing YouTube was the greatest thing I ever did because it made me realize that it's qu quantity is more important than quality. You just got to crank yes. stuff out. Yes. And so if you spend like 300 hours doing something because that's your stupid engineer brain. It's way more than that and then for you, way more people. <laughs> 300,000 hours doing something with your stupid engineer brain and you're sitting there and you're like I could like make this better I can make that better like I remember I was building I was building this light panel this L, this color LED panel because I like making videos right so what better time to make videos like what what better way to spend your time if you like making videos than making equipment to make videos and then yeah. never making videos sure. that's a really that's a really good use of time <laughs> and I was like oh I want like a battery light an indicator light and I found these red yellow LEDs or red green LEDs that were like uh it has like three terminals, right? So the LEDs are built into the same mm -hmm. little fuse. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I built a circuit where if you did a certain thing or whatever, then they would start lighting up in the other direction and there was no like digital, it was completely analog. And then I was sitting there thinking to myself, why did I just waste like a week of my life doing that? <laughs> and guess what? Do you know what I never ever finished building? that light that yeah. led panel i had all the stuff i bought everything and i never finished it and it burned it all burned and uh, you know i this is gonna sound weird but like i'm really glad some of that stuff burned because <laughs> it's like it like it's away from my soul it, like like it was peeled away from my soul it's cleansed. i was Cleansing cleansed fire. and i never have to think about how i never finished it because i have the perfect You're thinking about it right now no but like it, i don't feel the weight of it. yes yeah i get that yeah. well what's, so, what's like the the like because uh, I, uh, for a YouTube video, I made a really crappy battle bot once and I fought against Hey, take Will's, that back. It was great. Well, mm, says the guy who ripped it to shreds. I bought it. I bought mine. That's Will literally, bought, that's so pathetic. Literally red devil. Yeah. Right? I bought a yeah. robot and that is so much less impressive than building the crappy, the really good robot you guys built. So yeah, me and Jake laser, we got, we got an electric wheelchair base and I'm, that's like that's a battle bot. It's like when, that used to be Comedy Central was that. Yes, because when yeah. you I like if you've ever looked at an electric yeah. wheelchair, if you take the chair off of it and you take the panel off of it, like it just looks like a battle suspiciously bot. like a battle yeah. bot. Yeah. Because to try to loop back, also somebody entered that in Power Wheels. Uh huh. Uh, an electric wheelchair. Yes, but they made it look like a giant Roomba and then sat on top of dressed as a cat. Okay, and then well, drove the entire race, running into a wall, turning around and mount, running into a wall. See, that's, I can respect that. I respect that's that. flavor. Yeah. that's some good flavor. I liked it because it was a moving landmine that you had to race around. <laughs> <laughs> Who, it was I, hysterical. I can respect that. And so, like the, we took an electric wheelchair base and we stuck just an electric chainsaw on it, and the whole thing was like bang bang because it was controlled by a Harbor Freight uh, electric uh, wireless relay for turning outlets on and off. Beautiful. And let me tell you, that robot was destroyed immediately by Red Devil. <laughs> you know, I, Red, Red I, Devil is not a destructive robot. <laughs> Like the the problem was you had no control over your robot because it was just using like like yeah, fan was, remote yeah, 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 it more only, than one problem. It, it really <laughs> was hard to steer. It kind of would just spin in like this death circle, and then the chainsaw did nothing against the whatever metal made up Red Devil's body. Chainsaws are it's hard to get a chainsaw to cut yeah. even a tree. So, yeah. I mean. <laughs> but like, why stray from that? Why would you do that? If if Aaron. You, if you Aaron. explain, yeah, all this is Aaron. my fault. Everything is my fault. All right, Why have you done this? Well, wait, well, well it's like if everybody showed up to an event, that like how it is currently ran is you are doing four. They call them fight night fights, okay. and then the, everybody gets ranked, and they do a tournament of the top thirty-two. Okay, okay. If you, everyone showed up with that. You'd film everyone's first fights, and, and the event would be, be over. It would be amazing. It would and the be event amazing. would be over, and you'd have and a you'd go get drunk two hours, <laughs> and of then TV. you'd go get drunk and eat pizza. <laughs> I mean that. Does that sound bad? The event's in Vegas, so it would oh. get out of hand. Yeah, That sounds even uh, better, actually. Beer and pizza. <laughs> robots get destroyed. I was not in debate. The robots get destroyed. <laughs> we throw them in the trash, and then we go get beer and pizza. <laughs> we don't have to take them home so with us. So one of the us. reasons I like Power Wheels yeah. is it's a lot closer to that. But that can be in the middle of a weekend, and the cart explodes, and it's just funny, and we're done. <laughs> Do you know what? And we go get beer and pizza. Right. <laughs> You know what broke my soul when I first saw Power Wheels was someone took the shell off of it and I realized it was like a steel frame go-kart and the plastic Power Wheels shell was on top what of it. What are that. the rules about that exactly? And Power Wheels, can you just build a car? Like wh what's what's the actual rules there? Yeah, so it ends up, like there's a couple of good governing ones. They're all electric. 
the biggest one that makes the most sense is, is a fuse limit. So okay. you have to run, okay. everybody has to run through a fuse. That just limits how much power you get. Sure. Which basically is your top end limiter. Okay. Like, okay. Calm yourself. Don't die. Uh, Cause yeah, liability, definitely a thing. Sure. Um, and then it's either, it needs to start out as power wheels or look like something that could have been one. Or look like something that could have been one? What does that mean? So in my, like in my instance, the most previous car I built looks like Gary the Snail. Mm. Okay. Like it, and Little Tykes never made a Gary the Snail Power Wheels car. Gary the, oh, but Gary it, like, the Snail is, is from SpongeBob. For and then the other thing wondering. that happens points-wise is you do well for getting points in a race for speed. Like okay. if, if you're actually racing. Uh, there's also a board that gets wandered around the audience with buttons next to everybody, every cart name. And you want to get the audience to vote for you. And they can push the button as many times as they want and just follow it around. This is like sometimes five-year-olds will just follow around and be like, this car. Mm. (laughs) And just spend like a solid hour-long race. So it's more of like a a marketing exercise than an actual race. Which like the the cart that won the the previous season is uh, Dr. Quinn Medicine Cart. It's a horse. You ride it like a horse. And it's amazing. It's not the fastest car on the track. It's not too slow. But it won. Also, a Wienermobile has won. Mm, also rode good. like a motorcycle. Thing was beautiful. Those, there's a see, trend. those sound but good. It's, those sound like the correct. But if you're not cramped inside the vehicle, is it really power wheel racing? <laughs> no, see, I made the snail as a knee jerk because I could actually sit in it. Ah. The one I made before that was a little Tykes Cozy Coop minivan. Yeah, 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 yeah. That they used to have you do a moxie skit, which is like a minute long thing with three kids judging you. Like okay. Olympics. <laughs> Olympics yeah, I think style. I did that when we did the yeah, shopping your, cart. Yeah, your shopping cart yeah. nonsense. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> you mean the spirit of the event? I hope well, wait, you bank wait, that. wait, 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 <laughs> wait. Yeah, I know. I was there. You just called it nonsense. <laughs> yeah, a and it's nonsense. The part is not and a it's power not. wheel. Yeah, that, right, was, that was a sting operation to show that <laughs> that they are, they've gone, to, they've strayed too far. I was one of the people throwing lemons at you. I remember <laughs> feeling all the lemons <laughs> hitting me. I Those remember. are from my backyard. <laughs> Where they? There was a lot of. Where did you? I was so many lemons. There's a lemon tree in my backyard. I, I, rem, I yeah. can vividly remember each and every single one hitting me. <laughs> yeah, it was actually like a lot of lemons. But like the the cart I had before the minivan was literally made out of plywood. Mm. Like the entire cart was plywood. Why not plastic? Here's what I was thinking. So like I, because I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it. That's why I call it a dick measuring contest because I know exactly. It's like it's like well, I'm, like, I'm not denying anything. I know anyone like, who's an engineer or does any like there is something wrong with you. Like yes. I know what it is because it's wrong with me too. Also, my fuse nonsense is worse than liquid nitrogen. There is like, really it's easy oh, to just focus on something and like try to solve the problem better and better and better and better and better, and then the competition is like a motivation for doing that. Oh yeah. So like you're looking for an excuse or some sort of justification to spend the time to do this like creative problem solving, and you end up in situations where they now have to impose uh, like a fuse limitation yeah, because you figure out well some of it's latching onto an avenue. It's like oh I right. can go be creative there. It's literally the event is about rule breaking, and so what everyone does is they try to figure out how to circum- circumnavigate the rules, all the gotchas of. You know, you have to have stock motors. So then they go and get a dozen motors from a dozen different power wheels and make a 12 motor drivetrain (laughs) to go faster. (laughs) And so then the rules get implemented and then everyone tries to break the rules. I mean, I this is exactly my MO is like break the rules um, without getting in trouble. Um, You know, I, I bet what you could do is to sort of like try and make sure that like no no meta develops. It should be like Iron Chef style. Like every year there's a new set of rules that is supposed to be a challenge of like like okay, this year you have to include um uh I don't know what would be a All really the dumb. steel has to be rusty. Yeah. Like yeah, and it then there's that like rust year. <laughs> rust year, you your <laughs> composition of the metal has to be a certain percentage of rust. So like a tricky thing, like in this case, you're trying to get somebody to build a hundred plus pound. Ooh, you can only, you only use eighth inch bearings. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> try- <laughs> Already going. Like <laughs> that's not that hard. <laughs> you just have to use more of them. Yeah. <laughs> You just treat them as the balls of the ball bearings to make the large oh, ball no, bearing or no, the small ball bearing. But see, no, would be okay yeah. like, no, that would be okay already. That would be If it was only one year, and then like you knew that that was only going to work for one year, and then the next year it's something entirely different, I think that'd be totally okay. Well, so the the trick here, like you're trying to get people to build a hundred plus pound go kart, and you need to get them to travel. Like all the races were maker fairs, right? So a lot of teams were showing up with the same car year after year with like slight tweaks. 
from the amount of time and effort it takes to make one I've in the got first it. place. But, but, so, I mean, that's so the issue the, then, yeah. is that they should just be spending less time and effort so that they're Some of them did cars. not appear to spend very much time at all. That's good. I think yeah. that's the way... It should. It, it should made be, for some great spectacles, and I appreciate that. It should be them. the weekend before the event is when these should be built. That was the shopping Yeah. yeah. That was... <laughs> Okay, I got one. How about you have to be using like 2,400 watts at all times? And if you dip below it, you you lose. So you just have like a massive light array that you should get dipped. Well, literally, and however you, you want to burn the power, if you we, go under 1,200, you lose. No, we have talked about having an entire separate motor flywheel system for regenerative braking. In order to always Why? be pulling max current past the fuse. Why? Because it's an because engineering it's, here's measuring a, contest. Here's a set of constraints. How do you maximize them? See, this is where you need to come in and do scorched earth and just burn it all to the ground. Um, I need to stop saying shit like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like make the rules so bad. Like one of my one of mine because I knew like the worst part of all the power wheel stuff I've done is when you start putting weight on it, it starts destroying the like the plastic loops that the axles go over. Mm -hmm. So I think by forcing people to somehow have to like maintain that original like that plastic piece that the axle goes through, like that axle mm -hmm. cannot change, hmm. and it cannot be mounted. Like you can re try to reinforce it, mm -hmm. but you cannot like replace it. Yeah. Okay. So something where it's like it's it's a mechanical fuse. Essentially, like if you get too rowdy, the car is going to start shredding itself. Well, yeah, people are still going to find ways around that. Yeah, but then you just I mean, you do get to like also engineer brain dial back. What are you trying to accomplish? Trying to make it is it, is it to make as big of a yeah. spectacle as possible to watch one of these races? I want to. So like, if we want to go far, far into it, it is to like. I mean, there's a couple ways of describing it. The easiest one is so like a, a teenager could do it, like a fifteen year old kid or a ten year old kid could do Ooh, it. Ooh, those uh, would be really bad cars. Yes, and but then they're great because they're lighter weight. Right, mm. they're they're. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine you looking at people on the street just going day to day in their just normal lives and you, just, jockey, you like. just see them as like weights and how well they would do in a race and it's just a number. Let's see, I put a like hundred and three pound friend of mine in a car once. <laughs> The throttle stuck on. Uh, she went through two barriers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did she survive? I she she to... did. Okay, now it is she, funny. She, yeah, I but she's, check she bounced. She weighs two barriers heavier now. They're fused to her. I should have waited to hear that before I laughed. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. She died a horrible barrier. <laughs> she, she is still with us. She is still Were the barriers us. okay? <laughs> um, entertainingly, she managed to T-bone somebody with the barrier. Oh, <laughs> she went all the way through crap. and carried into the other side of the event. Yes. That's amazing. I, okay, so I think... All I can think about is that me looking in at Power Wheels is is like I'm I can't do it. I can't participate because it's sort of inaccessible. If that makes sense. That is essentially what like where I would draw the line is if people start to feel like it's inaccessible and the can you spirit, add, can you add more clarity to what part makes it feel inaccessible? It feels like everyone's too good at it. Mm, mm, you know, I like see. where it's like you know uh, lemons and lemons. Mm -hmm. um, so Le Mans is like a race yep. with cars. Lemons is making fun of Le Mans and you have to have a car that's worth less than $500. It also has the mm. same people doing the same what nonsense. It, really? There no. Is, oh, a, oh, yeah. There, really? are, there, are more, there are higher levels of try hard and uh, but they cars do, of Lemons. They have a rule. And they're fantastic. But, there's, there's a rule. Yeah. If your car, if they deem your car to be, no, they can at any point buy your car for $500. So that's the, oh that's, right, I see. So if you put too, if you if you try to yeah. cheat too much, they'll buy it off yeah. of you, and you'll they'll have just a huge they'll loss. just kill your car. And so I, I think see. that it's like a, a spirit of the event where mm -hmm. you really don't want to you don't want to even get right, close to triggering right, right, that right, because right. then they'll just make you hurt. That's well, good. Like that's a good rule. Power Wheels technically has that same rule. Really? But they'll they just, just never do it because in, oh. this, in this case, somebody is bringing something that large that they worked on to a show. Well, but that's their and they fault. Want to show, that's yeah. their fault. I, you got to be willing to say no. So, well, see, my suggestion was if you show up and you're blatantly like over budget, like legal, et cetera, yeah. they just literally dock you a few size. Uh, like you're winning nothing, but you mm. still get to come be in the race. So here's the thought. It should be simple enough where if you show up and your car's too complicated, in that like afternoon you can go to Walmart, buy a new car, and make a new racer. Mm. That's kind of but what. But in that case, you're asking them to go spend half the cost of their car. Well, they on brought a new yeah, car. they brought too complicated. It just, you know what? It it, 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 it yeah. feels like 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 it 
intramural sports versus like competitive yeah. sports that makes me feel like because like we me and will were in an intramural oh soccer league once and some team showed up looking to just Dude, start some shit it was insane they were so good it we was were crazy. so bad we there was one game where we literally scored no points and halfway through the goalie the other team's goalie ran out and started playing with the rest of his team i think the, the ref got really mad because they knew that we would never be able to score even on an empty goal the funny thing is the not scoring thing that could have been the world cup like that's what happens but so no but like it was you know, so disrespectful yeah, like you know yeah. what i'm saying like like why don't those people that try hard at power wheels racing like just buy a nascar car or something yeah. right like why money space <sighs> It's, like, I haven't done 24 hours of lemons because I don't have space to do a lemons car. Yeah. Like, it's easier to build a tiny go-kart. Right. From an but accessibility then it's like, perspective. You see, it's like, it ends up being, like, people, like, realizing that, like, like there's there's a certain pond size that they are stuck in. They'll never be able to go into a bigger pond. They go, okay, well, I'm just going to be the biggest fish in this little yeah. pond. <laughs> and the pond starts getting really, like, cramped and no one else can get into the pond. <laughs> What's it? So, like, I've got a group of friends in Michigan that still do it. Yeah. And, but they've put an amount of effort towards, hey, you're new to this? This motor, these wheels, these tires. Right. Hmm. Like, make that chunk as accessible as possible to be like, this will get you rolling. You won't hate yourself. You still need to do other things to make the car good. Right. But this will get you rolling in at least a hazard on the track. So, if you had to, like, if you were to start an event like this and there's, a like, a high school team. And so you're going to do this like with high school kids. What would you establish as the rule? And there's like, let's say there's like a week to do it. I had I, like, I've put some thought into this and well, I think a lot of it was limit the time. Hmm. So as, as far as the, uh, the July event, uh, it could be entertaining. Day one, you were building your cars. Day two, you were racing hmm. or the first half of day one of like limit the shenanigans by you don't have that much time. Right. Like it's one of the reasons that like your egg drop videos. Yeah. I like them because you were constraining that weird shit. Nobody can go out and just like 3D print all the stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. You That's, have to use garbage. Yeah. You like the egg drop videos? Oh, thank God. Those <laughs> are the only ones he likes. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I'll literally, I'll take anything. <laughs> well, you're laughing at me like you don't feel the same way. <laughs> Give me something, please, God. It's the only time there's someone intelligent on the show. <laughs> the guest <laughs> no i i i agree that i mean that was part of like the the reason we did those was i mean there's a variety of reasons but one when you do make those constraints it makes it easier to make those videos because the scope is smaller it also makes it more fun and and inherently it does make it it makes it more fun it makes it more interesting because you get to see somebody sort of struggle in real time to accomplish a goal and the consequences don't matter mm -hmm. like yeah. i really feel like if you win power wheel racing you should be ashamed of yourself yeah like do you feel ashamed of yourself aaron uh not really no. wow <laughs> but I, I think i think that that is sort of it's like almost like a um a little bit of like the spirit of the event like if i had to reset it up i would probably set it up in a way where if you did win you should feel bad mm, like you what you get slimed or like something? like you yeah like you yeah like, like <laughs> you get you're like i am, I am so win. sorry that i won my car was too good i was too good of a racer this was like an accident it will never happen again <laughs> public apology like, yeah okay wait all right i've i've got an idea i want to hear how you would ruin it aaron because i think you've got you've got a knack for this all right hear, yeah. me, out. <laughs> hear me out i i've had this idea for bouncing around for a while i just don't really know how to Execute. Actually, it could be. It could turn into a 53rd extra. Actually, now that I think about it, which would be cool. Oh, I um, came up with a good one the other, this morning too. I'll tell you about it later. So, so it's battle bots, but you can only use things you can get in an IKEA. So only the thing, the items that you can buy in an IKEA, like they, they have little buy power in tools. IKEA or they obtain have, in the building. Mm, buy okay. as a product in IKEA. You can Not, get in IKEA you, without going to jail. You can't go into the back room and start stealing. Well, their I know power they have tools. like the little like the seat testers. That's just like some pneumatic cylinders. Well, no, 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 Aaron. See? You have to walk into <laughs> an IKEA. I know. As you a asked customer. me how I would ruin yeah. it. 
<laughs> so that's that's the like like oh god this is so already so frustrating <laughs> you walk into the ikea as a customer of ikea so you have you, cash you, you only have cash you don't got like a go in the back cash. you and, can but and no you, theft all right no theft no theft you can, no crime you can buy whatever you want as long as you can buy it normally and you have i'm gonna give you one day i'm gonna give you 24 hours in the ikea to build a battle bot what would you do uh, I think that that would be a cool. Yeah, yeah. Can we do I, that? I, I, I told you my idea. Is try to make a CNC machine using stuff from oh, IKEA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you would you the, first the, you would make a stand, CNC the machine, desk. and then you would use the desk. standing desk legs. <laughs> yeah. You, then you'd use the CNC machine to make a better battle bot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like I'm thinking anything that's motorized in there. I think it's standing yeah. desk. They have yeah. little. They have like drills. They have little drills. Uh, yeah, you can get IKEA drills. Yeah. So you got to gang a lot of those up. Ah. And this is just like straight up battle bots, one versus the other. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. You have to kill the other robot to death. It'd yes. probably like energy wise be a pretty lame grabby like basically using desk actuators. You think just like to a clamp and lift people because <laughs> probably closer to like a vex competition. Uh-huh. Than yes, a... <laughs> yes. I just, Honestly, though, no. used to work I, there. I, <laughs> I would be so impressed looking at a a robot made out of crap from ikea yeah like, especially because more impressed it's gonna be like mostly mdf yeah <laughs> like it's gonna be bad it's like guaranteed to explode yeah. those are sort of the challenges that like i i kind of like like the best and those are the hardest sort of to put yourself into those situations because you're you're essentially adopting a pointless cause like you're mm. adopting like a, you're acknowledging this is a huge waste of time I'm go- I'm trying to justify this myself. There's no mm-hmm. exterior motivation. I am wasting my time. And so nobody does this. You almost have to force people to waste their time mm-hmm. and give them these stupid challenges that sort of don't really amount to anything other than a fun exercise. Yeah. Well, it's Which, also like, like I referred to Power Wheels as my zero stress hobby. Mm-hmm. Relative yeah, to and you guys other- are you guys slowly <clears throat> are pushing it to the yeah, relative because to my other hobby. I think I, I think of it like as just, sort of like, like a, <laughs> a an underdog story. Like like the the challenge is in that you're working with garbage, right? Like yeah. if, if you're like if you're the hero of the story, what's sort of more compelling is if you're the the like the underdog that has to like put together trash or if you're like the 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 you've seen little rascals little <laughs> yes. yeah i think they they yeah, they, they won with trash. great power yeah. wheels yeah. racers yes the the, the uh, what do they call them the, the box cars or whatever oh mm. the it's uh box derby cars yeah yeah it's all just grab <laughs> oh, you know what no that one was like actual go-karts yeah but but it was a movie they use so like a washing machine or something to do it Oh my god, this is bringing up some very, very <laughs> deep. I watched that movie a ton as a kid. It's a fantastic really? movie. Yeah, I feel like. But I also, it was that. like, here's the rich kid who's got all the toys and just makes the really nice, sleek thing. Oh, yeah, all fuck that yeah. kid. Yeah, right. Versus his, straight up garbage can. <laughs> yes. Hood. Like, yeah. let's go. Just yeah. make trash, trash machine. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think uh, I personally enjoy that the most. The, the zero repercussion challenges where. It is a waste of time, but someone else has provided the external motivation. Mm. And it's kind of like the extras a little bit for the podcast. Where it's like, we just <laughs> huge waste up. of time. It's, it's a Massive. huge waste of time, but we film it and then it makes money. And I still don't, I'll never be able to explain that to my grandmother. If you're listening to this, grand, she absolutely does not listen to this. Um, but like, it's. I think it, there's something nice about someone basically telling you to figure this out, and you have to navigate this really bizarre situation, and you have to do as good of a job as you can, and it doesn't matter. What's going through my head when we set up a, a battle bot yeah. in the box yeah. is, this is dumb. What are we doing? Yeah. That's a whole lot of effort and time and money mm. that went into that thing we're yeah. setting down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. This is, okay, let's... All right, guys. You know the funniest like, thing I've seen in battle bots. So it's just pick us. Like, where do you land on that yeah. gradient from power I th- wheels you have to, to battle You have to force to... people to do it. Like the problem with battle bots, and like, this is something the show has struggled with a lot, is it it benefits from these big, powerful, hard hitting machines, mm-hmm. and it creates this like kind of cold war, or, like war of attrition or whatever, where everyone's trying to hit each other harder mm-hmm. and they're trying to protect themselves better instead of just making cheaper robots that explode better. Oh, so you because we're a bunch of people trying to try hard it and win, right? And so there's like this really awkward thing where where people like the the boundaries aren't set up 
aggressively enough to accomplish what the show needs to be successful and to entice the contestants to like participate in a way because like if you show up to a to battle bots with a robot that costs you five grand like you are gonna lose and your robot is going to get destroyed Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you did like it is way too advanced like, so we made the joke of once they moved it to Vegas, it was like, this is weird. Like, robot combat people want to know they lose money. Yeah. So, so we're not out gambling. We're right. Just it's like guaranteed <laughs> loss. Burn, it's like the, burn the money mm-hmm. in the box. Yeah. And then, yeah. So. And I, I don't know. Like, I think I think it's really cool. But sort of seeing the behind the scenes and the economics of it makes you realize that um, it's just this insane passion thing. But it's almost like not passion. It's I, I sort of <laughs> described. You covered it earlier. Like, Battlebots is more FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> this is 100 like, percent FOMO. Which, I don't know if that makes any I'm, sense. Yeah, my team is five years in at this yeah. point. As far as if you don't go, you'll see your friends out there having fun. Mm, right. And you're like, oh, they're having fun, and you miss the part where they're miserable for the entire <laughs> yes. like couple months I, before. Because like, I I like the build. I like <laughs> my my general like thing I figured out is I like building cool shit with my friends. If I'm doing yeah. that, I'm having a good time. I'm happy. Yeah. It sounds a lot like uh, YouTube, actually. It yeah. is. <laughs> I mean, I feel like. A lot of stuff maybe in life has these parallels. <laughs> what is it? Without darkness, there is no light kind of thing. Like, I it sounds weird, but like doing all the BattleBot stuff, there's like, it sounds really awesome. But then after spending like, you know, two weeks in a hotel doing like 12 hours uh-huh. a day and or even longer, you start to think to yourself like, man, I really want to go home. Oh, God. And so it's like every year, at least when I was doing it, you would show up and you'd be excited to be there and then mm. it would just drag on a little bit too long oh god that's <laughs> well, like the first year we did battle was the most burned out toasted yeah. dead depressed sad aaron has ever been yeah. wow and then i'm like let's do it again yeah exactly and that's what's so <laughs> weird about it is that it comes time next year and you're like well i don't want to not go right well that's like the 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 like the t- the different types of fun right it's like type one mm. fun type two fun and like type like four is when it's just never fun yeah type, yeah type oh, four is type like four. just yeah it's What's like like one three? one of them remember. one of them is like fun that fun. is like feels good and fun in yeah. the moment one of them is like it's fun when you look back on it but while you were doing it it was miserable and then one of them was just like it's just not fun it's bad <laughs> yeah, now it's, and just, it's bad then yeah, it's bad now, now bad it's later like, it's yeah, like type four fun there's like one guy raising his hand right now it was like most of my life has been type four fun. <laughs> I mean, it's it's got the weird thing, like the realization slowly, and I'm sure you guys have dealt with some of this in terms of having kids come up and recognize from BattleBots, or there's a, a book at Scholastic Book Fairs now. So Whoa! Um, every single elementary school in the country that's now good. has a book with two of my team's robots. That's in That's wild. I didn't think about that. You were would literally be yeah. like a, like an American hero to like a five year old yeah. boy. But, like we were at a sponsor of ours. Uh, and I Who's was talking, a sponsor? You can shout that uh, here. Van Beber Brothers, Petaluma, California. What do they I was, do? I was chatting with. They, they make all the armor. So, like, okay. so in this case, they're laser cutting and forming <laughs> robot steel armor, stuff. steel that has no business being bent. Yeah. Oh, oh god. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember how I've seen. Yeah. But like, I was chatting with uh, Royce, who's one of the owners of the company, and he said his kid called him, and I'm at the book fair. This BattleBots book, and I had dropped off tantrum to sit in their lobby for like a week mm-hmm. so he was able to go buy the book and bring his kid mm. open the book and point to the robot that was right in front of him pants. whoa yeah so like stuff like that it's weird figuring out how much me messing around with my yeah. friends matters to a significant number of people and that's so nice too so because like, like for those kids they're never gonna have to find out that the robot is like super racist later you know yes like, oh that's, my god oh, that's yeah. such a good point like, those are the only heroes you should be meeting are the wait, wait, the battle Aaron, bot heroes really quick uh this is for future <laughs> they're not racist they're no not it's racist. a trap okay. don't it whatever he's about to ask you Aaron, don't answer it's a trap <laughs> could you imagine being a kid and then later you find out that your favorite robot on tv was actually really racist <laughs> R two D two. Oh no, R two D two. You don't know what he's, he's been just saying this whole the time. entire time. He's literally beeped every time he says something. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what the sounds are. It's censoring. God, I wish yeah. my heroes were all robots. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, mine's my, Bill Cosby. <laughs> Damn you! I've got a Wally sitting in my living room. That oh I'm no! In college, but he's uh. he's not racist. It doesn't appear. Oh good. So you don't know yet. Oh, he was okay it. with Eva, and she's all like fancy. And maybe shit. the oh, uh, right. okay. well, maybe the creator of. We're gonna. This is this is gonna. Get, we need to actually cut. <laughs> if you're if you're so if you work at Pixar and you worked on the movie Wally and you want to make sure that you ruin the movie for everyone, let us know how racist you are in the comments, and that, how then we'll Wally know is. how racist is Wally. Please let us know canonically. And we will now know not to not to have him as a hero. 
<laughs> we can keep that. That's but like, fine. I feel. I'm, I'm a, but like that project was a college one, and it was the first time that I had worked on a project that people elicited like highly emotional responses to. Mm. So you get little kids like crying tears of joy, little kids crying tears of terror because while he's on the TV, he's not in real life. Mm. And then oh you god, get, like, that's funny. Adult people adult uh-huh. entertainers. that are just really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, hey, hey, I've, I've seen, seen some drawings, drawings of Wally. Wally. I've, I've seen, seen some drawings. I, of when Wally. I search Wally on Google, I don't. It's not just the word Wally. I well, type like, some other things in too. <laughs> seeing adults cry tears of joy, seeing something that they like, like it's just it really is just a testament to how good Disney is in marketing stuff. I, honestly, it is. Yeah. Disney scares me. Yeah, I cannot wait for uh, whatever they have to do to extend their their copyrights longer than they should exist even more. Watch, they're gonna. Proactively make Mickey Mouse faces so nobody <laughs> wants to use them. <laughs> if just, we can't have them, nobody why does can. everything come back to burn it to the ground, William? <laughs> I won't do it if they can't have Mickey Mouse, then nobody can have Mickey Mouse. So it turns out they're going to retcon Mickey Mouse is somehow worse than the, all the Splash Mountain characters. I he would not be surprised like, they about have Mickey. That. Like, they're going to put him Steamboat in the vault and never let him out. Sense. It's already was not it? great. I don't actually that remember yeah, that. Me that was either. before yeah, my time. I've never actually some racist seen it. origin stuff back then. Yeah. yeah. I would not be surprised. Well, it wasn't racist back then. It was just casual. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make it better? <laughs> no? Oh. <laughs> Shit. Back in the vault. <laughs> I love the Disney vault. Like, there's just a really this is yeah. an awesome implication there. Like, let's see what else you got in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> it's Walt Disney's show, frozen head, cryogenically preserved. Stuff. Where's the good stuff, Walt? <laughs> show us your vault, Walt. Show us the good, the Walt the collection. Walt vault. The Walt Can we have vault. a safety third vault? Can we oh, have something? I think that's that we... <laughs> just the safety third YouTube channel. No, I think there was an episode we didn't publish. The, well, yeah, the, the implication of the vault is that it goes away and is inaccessible for an indefinite amount of time. Yeah. Sometimes it comes out, but then it goes back in. Because they're ashamed of it. Incinerator yes. vault. Or they realize it's bad for their stock prices. Yeah, or, yeah, or it literally just inflates the value because you're creating scarcity uh, out of nothing. That actually, that that's actually, that's, I yeah. think that's the yeah. answer. Damn it! Yeah. Damn it! It's like the McRib. Oh so God, smart. McRib. Yeah, is there what's? Can we have an equivalent to McRib on this podcast? <laughs> What if the McRib was racist? Oh, wait, what if, uh, can we literally, oh, what if it's it's a sandwich okay. that we actually periodically mailed to like the Galaxy Brain backers, but only certain times of the year, only once a year, if you're a backer, we'll mail you a sandwich it's that like we made. It's like the class hamster in kindergarten. Yeah, oh, there's one sandwich between everyone. <laughs> So you have to take hamster. turns taking care of the hamster. <laughs> yeah, and the, the sandwich. sandwich uh, don't eat the sandwich. It will be a bad sandwich. Wait, it will be rotten. What? what? Wasn't there a thing? Wasn't this a thing at bars? It was like a prohibition thing. What? There was like, a, oh, I, don't, I know there's a liquor sandwich? license thing where you have to serve food in order to have a license. There's something. So yeah. They'll, they'll put a, I've, I went to one place that had a Lunchable on the menu. Uh, it was the only food oh, item on the menu. Oh, and no one's, and so no one's so actually going to buy it. So, well, I bought it once. Oh. They just gave me a Lunchable. <laughs> I think, but I it was like they're legally a restaurant serving because food they have, and then it's a bar. Yeah, huh? I know there's like dozens of podcasts that do a bunch of research and stuff before they like talk about things. Not but this one. <clears throat> no, I, nope. no, no. We literally just showed up. That's, that's we never really know what we're talking about, and then we always have to kind of half remember things. I'm like, oh yeah, I think I heard about yeah. this one thing. Yeah, yeah, like you're back. You're like kind of putting your insurance policy that it could be total <laughs> shit. What we're talking about. <laughs> I swear to God, though, it was a sandwich that okay. it was like the traveling sandwich at a bar where you would buy the sandwich that would get you, allow you to buy alcohol, but you wouldn't eat it. I don't remember the context and of the story. So what, then what? you'd like give it back to them? Or Basically, you'd... yeah, you would just leave it at the table and then they would like, it was. Oh, oh, I mean that even if that's not real, it makes sense. That was another I'm like, sure that, that was like a, a, a law breaking dick measuring contest or like how could you bypass the rules so you could sell alcohol without without selling food. And it just became like right because the overhead for a contest. single sandwich is incredible. Well, that was pretty small. a self set like. But it's like well, there's a bar yeah, where we yeah, like to sell booze. Great. But it's like I think that <laughs> someone definitely like I think everybody gets their rocks off. Oh, someone was super like, happy. Yeah. Anybody who finds that edge. It's like illegal. Like maybe like lawyers. there's entire books about professional motorsport where it's just looking for the unfair advantage. Isn't that literally what being a lawyer is? Actually, now that I think about it, is just trying mm. to figure out how to navigate the rules in a way that's beneficial I've, to your client. I've had to work around some silly patent nonsense. <sighs> Sorry, I can't do that because they have that patented. Can do it this way. Oh, uh, and legally God. says okay. Well, they used an and, and used... statement in in their program. <laughs> yeah. I guess we can't do that. Everything's ors. Wait, and... I thought you couldn't yep. patent code. 
Uh, can you? I, I think you can patent <laughs> algorithms or something. I think you can patent algorithms. There's definitely some sort of copyright protection for code. Otherwise, you just pirate code. Huh. Oh. There's something there. I thought everyone just, just got it off of Stack Overflow. <laughs> I mean, that they do. So it's actually all the code is basically the same What code. percentage of any given Windows release do you think is from Stack Overflow? <laughs> I would venture to say more than... I would, okay, let's just say if Windows was an elevator, you'd be uncomfortable getting in the elevator. <laughs> Wait, so you're just saying some guy came up with this answer and then you built an elevator around it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyways, oh, well, anyways that's, in. <laughs> it's the only thing controlling the life support equipment keeping grandma alive. Windows, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. We use Windows on a life Pretty support sure machine. sure this thing has brakes. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I spent the last year, six years working in MedDevice. Yeah. What, can whole, you, what, how much of that can you that, talk about? That's interesting. Uh, not Windows running on those things what is okay. it an arduino linux. how much arduino uh, real, code real-time linux stuff nah, so no arduinos no interesting interesting that makes me feel a bit better about putting grandma on a life support device <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah other other end of the spectrum from battlebots and firewheels yeah i have I, I think we talked about this a bit ago we were sort of asking like what what kind of person ends up doing medical devices because it takes a very unique set of skills did we talk about this or is this a conversation? It takes a lot of, of sets of skills. Yeah. Right. Because it's like, A, you got to be a doctor, which is, or like a medical professional, which is arguably mm -hmm. one of the most time consuming and complicated careers you can enter. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand how, A, the body works, B, and then have practical experience actually really understanding how the medical field works. Because you don't just, you don't just go to school and then all of a sudden you know how to make devices. Like you have to see a problem. Yep. That has to do with your expertise. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then you have to then decide to make a machine to solve the problem. Like, holy shit, that's a whole different skill set. So, like, what, I mean, how much can you talk about? What kind of stuff are you making? Hmm? Uh, ro robot surgery related things. Oh, oh are you, can like, you spill like the Michael beans? Reeves. Yeah. That video got shared around the office. Oh. And it, it was hysterical to all of us. And it was incredibly good for what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that, Michael? Caveat, you had to add. Wait, it was great for what it was. You just, you uh, just it's, heard it's somebody a... jerking Michael Reeves off live. <laughs> wait, wait I have second. seen, I think, two of his videos. What are the chances he picks up the phone? <laughs> that right one now? and Boston Dynamics. Oh, yeah, yeah. One. Let's let's make Spot sure that he knows that, that a real uh, medical <laughs> robot person says that his video was good for what it was. Do you think he's not going to pick up? There's no way. Oh, this is so embarrassing. We should deep fake a Michael Reeves voice and pretend like he picked up the phone. <laughs> oh, God. Shit. I, okay. Wait, we gotta cut that part out of the podcast so nobody can see it. <laughs> But then we actually gotta leave it in because it's funny it's how embarrassing that was. I I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and sound real arrogant here. I watched a single YouTube video of a surgical technique for repairing a knee, and it involved a lot more power tools than I uh, thought it would. Yeah. And they were literally like like they had like instructions where they had to tap a hole. They had to open up the person's knee, tap a drill a hole, tap it, and then put like a titanium screw in there to affix a like uh, like a Kevlar some Is strong he, like, rope smearing blood in. all over the printed paper manual as he's like yeah. flipping it open, and it's like crank one full rotation beyond hand tight. Well, so after watching that video, it kind of I was like. Like, this, this is exactly a, the same as my 2005 yeah, it's, it's Acura not, TL. Not that. It doesn't look that much different from just... Changing a tire. Yeah. <laughs> like, a surgeon is just a mechanic for a body. I felt like after do, watching that, I felt like I could do that. I felt I like I could probably... I've got an a idea. A lot of it is that, but as soon as you screw up, someone dies. Yeah, but so... <laughs> it's just liability. That's the only difference. Do you think somebody... Which like, can happen when you work in a car. Like, yeah, pilot. exactly. <clears throat> we should see but. if a guy from Jiffy Lube... <laughs> Actually, wait, could we? I, I have no idea. It's, this is an idea, uh -huh. and this... He's not listening. Ian? I found what you were talking about with Prohibition. Oh, what was the Prohibition oh, thing? Was a piece of bread. Yeah. Two pieces of bread. Was it how a sandwich was invented or something? It's a brick. A brick. A brick sandwich? Yeah. So the sandwich that you get during Prohibition was two pieces of bread with a brick in the middle. And so they were selling food, but you couldn't eat it, and they would just keep passing it around. So it was basically a big oh. FU to the... Okay. That's cool. So the next one would be, uh, what would it take to be able to get a Jiffy Lube employee into like an open heart surgery? 
Or like like uh, like I'm sure they've got like <clears throat> we like, asked ChatGPT <laughs> and Google's not gonna help us here. <laughs> they've got to have robots that like they can practice surgeries on, right? Like dummies, smart dummies that have vitals mm-hmm. or something. Those dummies, get... those also cadavers. What, was it Da Vinci? Oh, can we get a <clears throat> Jiffy Lube mechanic to open up a cadaver and replace you, the oil? You can't oh. for various license, for various legal reasons. Why? Well, what name <laughs> one legal reason why what? we couldn't do that? Uh, you need to be a reputable research and or development. Define. What, what Jiffy Lube is not that. What is so, Jiffy Lube if not a reputable car dealer? If they weren't reputable, people Turn, would die driving their cars. Tur- turns out when you're dealing with the sale of well, the handling and moving mm. of dead bodies. Uh, wait, I've got a question purposes. about the first word you used. <laughs> the, you said something about sale of a dead body. I have a question. It's on a highly that. regulated environment. So okay, are you saying that it if is you have the right license and connection you can pay money and get a dead body yes what are you allowed you to do to the body have that well no but wait once you once you buy the body what are you you're uh, what can you do to it uh, that's a really good question alan but i think you that's should be more specific than me to answer so okay okay wait okay. what Let's, can't you do to yeah it? yeah Let's say you buy a, a a cadaver are you allowed to like harvest its fat to turn into soap like, would uh, you be allowed to do that? No. Why there's, not? There's full ethic, ethics boards, etc. But you're not oh, selling so it. You just want to selling a it. body, but there's an ethics board involved, and they're allowing like, you to sell a body. But the word, the word. So what are they? What kind of decisions does the ethic board yeah, make if okay. they if they didn't stop the selling a dead body part? Mm-hmm. You don't get any more. So you like, just get the dead fines. body. What you can just like slap it around like, and stuff. Like what? There's entire people who their soul. I have a question. How many? How many it? dead bodies have you seen? Uh, I would guess at least like forty or fifty. Oh! What? I was. That, that is an oh! insanely high body count, dude. I was, I was at the. I was at the company Wait. for five years. Wait, we had it. we had Aaron here to talk about power versus power. <laughs> Holy shit! Wait, no shit. Way yeah. to bury the I lead, Aaron. Oh my god. What? Are you... Yeah, it's a little weird when you're like, Wait, "Hey, the I... robot broke," and you got to go fix it. And you're like, "You have like dead person robot." Yeah. Oh. It's a completely different environment. That's wow. This is one of the reasons I like Power Wheels because it's full shenanigans. What does your NDA look like? How many questions can we ask you? It's been a while since I've seen that one. But... Oh, so that's basically free <laughs> reign then. You you can do whatever you want if you can't remember what you signed. No. So is it how that works. is it for like one type of surgery or is it like a generic surgery robot? I'm not gonna answer that. You can't answer that one? Oh. Um Ooh. I mean, if you if you really want to find out like what any company is doing, just start hunting through patents. Mm. The hard part there is you need mm. to start deciphering legalese. But mm, mm. but so you could tell us what patents the company has. There's a lot. Yeah. Okay, mm. which one specifically? <laughs> what is the patent <clears throat> number? I bet if you <laughs> search your name on Google Patents, <laughs> that would find, that would show have some stuff show up. Okay, okay. How yeah. much does a cadaver cost? I don't know. You just you, you don't deal with that. that. You don't deal with my, accounting. That was, yeah, <laughs> that was not my purview. Who whose job was it? Like, was it the same person who would order parts off of McMaster? No. Who would? No. Does McMaster sell the corpses or what do you call it, cadavers? What's the problem with? It? <laughs> Wait, no. Me I too. I we we <laughs> opened any this. Level of like... We opened this. We opened this door to a tomb that we open the crypt <laughs> yes and we're going in this casket is open there's we're no going, going back <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy sh- <laughs> oh, sorry mom <laughs> i'd like to congratulate the monarch team on the first use of the ure- ureteroscopy robot <laughs> look i'm just gonna say it right now that was if, a couple weeks ago really way. like yeah if you if, think they listen to this crap no <laughs> but it's a decent sized milestone for them. <laughs> I think I think that if you <laughs> I'm I'm really sitting here rap, racking my brain right now because I feel like this is this is the time to ask all these questions that I know I want to ask, but I don't know which I don't really know what they are yet, and I'm trying really hard to come up with them. Okay, so um what uh what do they what do they do with the body when they're done? Like it's like how much can they use it throw for? it in like, the garbage? Like what when is it when do they need a new one? <laughs> Is it like when the bread the do they bread get under buried? Some cases when it starts smelling too bad. Actually, are that, they that preserved or anything, or is it? Mm, oftentimes, refrigerated or frozen. Holy shit! So, but then, then do they get like a casket in a funeral, or do they just get tossed in a 
dumpster. This, this is, uh, <laughs> do they go on to like other science? Because <clears throat> there's like the body labs, right, or the body farms, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe they go. The, the body oh, farm okay. just gets secondhand corpses. Yeah. From, other, other why would you buy new stuff? Like okay. for shipping purposes, if you're making lemonade. You get, ne- get don't get the nice lemons. Use the you pre use well, the kind of using abused lemons. <laughs> It's well, not for a, resource it, allocation purposes. Mm-hmm. You only really obtain the parts you need. Oh, also for shipping purposes. Okay, it's cheaper to ship just, just the a torso. Dick. Oh, the torso. Oh, so you were working with torsos <clears throat> or heads? Whoa! Or legs. I mean, it's, it is a weird one because, like, the second you stop to think about it, when you leave your body to science, so it is like McMaster. It is most effectively util- utilize that gift given by that person. Okay, into so the was mo- it, most useful research possible. Does it? Does the person? Does the? Does the cadaver? What do you call I it? Didn't does anticipate the, ending up here. By the does way. the cadaver come with like a spec sheet? Does it come with like the the McMaster sheet of yeah. like in this case like some level of medical records of what the, procedures that patient the, or that person had done? The PSI that they can hold. And the, <laughs> no, that's what they were trying to figure out. <laughs> Holy shit! We're never getting a real job. rating. <laughs> Okay, so, um, uh, I don't know what I expected. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you like, is it like, uh, when you go on, is it like a website where it's like you kind of select what you want, or do you have to send an email? Was was not my not your job. You don't not know my job. Man, God, I would have asked so many questions. I really, um, I like to imagine it as like a like a Tinder kind of an app where you oh, just, you can swipe. <laughs> <laughs> or like McMaster Car, where it's like you can search by like. Like the different the the stats of like height and weight and race and um uh percentage of of whatever you can, get, you can get various percentile bodies as far as tall, taller shorter. Would you ever seeing after seeing what you've seen? Would you donate your body to science? Yeah, it's more useful than alternative. Whoa. Hmm. Is that just something you write on the back of your driver's license or like? <laughs> what you, or you're yeah, like, do whatever is useful. <laughs> I don't. I mean, honestly, that's my. That would be my approach. That would work. Like, put me in a fighter jet that's going fifteen hundred miles an hour towards a brick wall. Whatever's useful. Yeah. Yeah. No, family the footage. no yeah, William like, Osmond. Yeah. What if it's like, like, it's like an organ donor? Yes, no. It says no, but then you write in a third option of like epic <laughs> weapon test. <Yeah. laughs> I'm sure that somebody would be like, uh, "There's only way, no. one way you're cutting me, and it's with explosives." <laughs> Give my body to William. Yes. <laughs> Somebody's gonna do that. Look, You're gonna get a, a weird a tre- notification, a, a weird email. <laughs> yeah. Can I? What are the, what's the legality of starting my own body donation clinic or whatever? Oh, yeah. Like if I just said, like if somebody know. signed their body over to me, holy shit. Okay. Could you literally legally give somebody your corpse? I don't know. Okay. Well, I worked on robots that did this. <laughs> like, what does Chat GPT think? <laughs> So it's like, all a crime. If, if okay. I Good. wanted to give my friend <laughs> like my body right, when right I die, answers come out of that. I I mean, it feels it feels a bit like 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 pornography, right? Like you can't pay someone to have sex with you, right. but you can pay two people to have sex with each other. Yes. So I think in the same way, you couldn't buy a corpse, but I think you could, you could give a corpse, or maybe you could pay. This mortuary could law you, or something. Hmm. Wait. How do I? How do I type porn into this? Um. I think he already did. Uh, um, yeah, you're a talented. Individual. Okay. So, <laughs> so, is there a, a rule that says you can't have a dead body? Well. Like that would they, be can't, Yeah, well, you can't because like you otherwise like you can have like like if someone like someone dies like like say that I died right now like right here. Oh, this is the exact same as Power Wheels too, by the way. Like oh, yeah, liquid yeah. nitrogen on the fuse. We're trying to break. We're trying to wiggle around the rules right now. If if I and died you don't right know the here rule. Well, that's right now, on the you, nobody here is going to get in trouble if I die and you just Correct. hang out for the rest of the podcast with the corpse on the couch, right? That's no. Right. There's nothing illegal about that. Like who comes to take it? Uh, like if you corner. stop them from taking it, is that illegal? What if we just don't say that you died? You just kind of leave me on the couch. Yeah, that's happened, right? You're not gonna go like it's not a crime, it's right? Just right. Gross. Yeah, because I mean, isn't that like what happens with people collecting like social security yeah. checks or something from like their dead like great? See, aunt that or would something? be the actual crime is the fraud, right? But not the leaving not, the dead body yeah. there, huh? 
And so, like, in a sense, at that point, it's not like you own the corpse, but the corpse right. is in your possession. There. Yeah. And that seems like it should be fine. Right. Like, what's the difference between, like, a corpse just... and, like, a flower pot that you own? Yeah. Like, at that point, it doesn't seem like there's really a difference. There has to be a rule about this. I'm positive there's a legal distinction between a flower pot and a corpse. I I can only imagine. <laughs> There's at least one. Ian, did you find anything? I'm worried about Googling this. <laughs> Why? Just Google it. You're, not, you're only going to go to jail if you commit the crime, not research it. Yeah. we're These are just thought crimes right now. This They're is, not real crimes. Yeah, this is called due diligence. Just be glad we weren't <laughs> born 40 years from now when, all, when chat GPT turns out to be the ultimate narc. I'm sorry. You want to do what, says chat GPT? <laughs> You want to own a corpse? I don't want to own a corpse. I'm just. The length of time is up to the state. The length. For the what? Length of what time length of time is up to the state? That you're allowed to keep a dead body in your home until the burial or cremation. You can wait. So keep... after a certain point, you're not allowed to even have a body in the house anymore. Generally, it's a few days you're allowed to. Keep okay. The dead body. That so, can't. I wait. feel like this that's is plenty of time. That's... that's all the time you need. So you can keep a dead body in your home for all a few days until burial but that number of days is dependent on the jurisdiction what can you do with the body like could you prop it up in a chair could you could you put it like under lewis's weiss chicken swapping robot like ask chat gpt (laughs) (laughs) i i I genuinely i know that you couldn't eat it and you probably couldn't yeah, fuck it. I know correct. that those two things I think are like but written could down you somewhere. Slap it a hundred thousand times. I think you could. <laughs> Ask Google if you can slap a corpse a hundred thousand times. I'm sure you want a coroner showing up and seeing a slapping robot above a dead person. I mean, my hunch is somebody's getting taken away for murder. <laughs> but if if you could prove, we should we're, we should have legal eagle. <laughs> Next episode. Can you imagine what a waste of his time this podcast would be? It would just be us trying to like get a free legal consult for all the problems we have. We literally in our lives. accidentally list all you the crimes we've that. committed. That would probably be the cheapest legal I mean, advice like, you can get. Why did you guys never post the episode with me? Uh, it was the audio was bad or something, I guess. Do you have an answer about slapping the corpse yet? You don't have an answer. Okay, well, I guess that's sort I think of where you we could have to end this. Corpse, is yeah. just open ended. If any of you are either a legal expert or think that you are a legal expert, leave a comment down below yes. about the legality of what you're allowed to do with a corpse in the handful of days that your jurisdiction allows you to keep it in the home before the burial. Yes. Please treat humans with respect. It was. It's. It's not a request or a Please. suggestion it is simply a we're, we're seeking information yeah just and information just purely information. theoretical just putting an addendum on there just yeah. don't do anything except answer the question yes i think frankenstein's an entirely believable story <laughs> are you related to that man frankenstein <laughs> no the frank- he's the my doctor. uncle the doctor yeah. yes uh, i'm not related God. to frankenstein I, but i'm related I'm to frankenstein's saying. monster <laughs> the sci-fi is getting he's my boyfriend <laughs> oh is he is he also from illinois yes yes uh, that's a really good way to change the subject from corpses <laughs> i'm also from illinois you're from illinois i am uh gurney <laughs> Uh, Winnebago. Winnebago. So Winne- next to Wait, Winnebago? Yeah. Isn't that kind of RV? Thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Safety too. Third oh, Podcast. Okay. We really appreciate your support. Oh, that helps us to do this, ask these hard-hitting, hard-hitting questions that oh, okay, I okay, would okay, consider borderline that. journalism. Oh, thank okay. you to everybody who supports <laughs> us. The names are here. Yeah, thank you to all of you. And then, Aaron, you, you get, I'll pick one here, and you get to snort it. Just snort it. Snort it. It's going to go bad. It might be dead. Here we go. Oh yes. Woo! Woo! That was a good name. If you would like to what am I selling? The Patreon? I've always feel like they know what they're getting. Do I even have to say it? I um if I'm you, not sure what they're getting at this point. I think Yeah, you know what? Do whatever the hell you want. 